what is our insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness today? This week. And continuing for the last many weeks, months, and years. Those people who claim they are suffering, they have pain and problems in their life. Uh, the insecurity is there, dissatisfaction is there, and a sense of unhappiness is there. Now, the sense of insecurity, or oh, insecurity, from the wealth, from the life, sense of fear for the death. But death is uncertain. We have a fear of unknown. We do not have a fear of known. Possibly if I come to your house, you don't have any fear. But if the stranger comes who is unknown, you may have a fear. So the fear is always for the fear of unknown. Second thing, dissatisfaction. We are not satisfied internally, either with our situation, events, people, relationship, there is that sense of dissatisfaction is always there in one or the other. I've been there. Uh, I was a guest and the host did not appreciate me. Finished. So we have a sense of dissatisfaction. And the third is a sense of unhappiness is always surrounded over life. We get unhappy with a small thing in the morning by a single thought, a feeling, an emotion. <laughs> Think. So we have counted three things. Insecurities with a lot of stuff outside in relationship to the world. Dissatisfaction in relationship to the world unhappiness in relationship to the world. We don't think. We don't think whether this insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness is within me or it is located outside in the world. Just think another way. That our interpretation of the world outside, the situation outside, the event outside causes insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness. I'm repeating. Doctor says undergo all the investigations. So you are happy to undergo all the investigations. You have in America, you have a good life, uh, health insurance. So you are, you have a less copay. So you go to all the investigations. No worries. He says, you know, I will take care of you. But the time comes. Doctor says, I'm sorry. You see the different situations. You are related to someone and that person rejects you, blames you, complains you. We are dissatisfied. We are unhappy. It is the same doctor who said, I am sorry, 
And it was the same doctor who said, no, don't worry, I'll take care of you. So what happens, my mind gives a wrong interpretation. Then only we have a sense of insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness. Can Bill Gates claim that he can live 150 years because he has a lot of wealth? You see the interpretation. But because I don't have, so I'm running after it. I give the interpretation because I don't have. That is why I'm insecure. I'm unhappy. He's as much insecure, as much unhappy as I am. The interpretation of the mind is wrong. Why it is wrong? Think of it. Why it is wrong? And what is the answer? I am looking for security outside where it is not. I am looking for security from the same human being who is recognized as a doctor. <laughs> Can one human being make my life secure? Think, think, think. Why we should think? Because we are a human being. We are gifted with a thinking ability. We, are, we have a free intellect to find what is the right knowledge. I'm all talking about Eastern wisdom. My father died, so I was quite young, so I ran to my master. Master, I started crying, and then I was... Then he didn't say anything. He waited that I should calm down. So when I calmed down, he said, go back to your home and perform all the rituals according to the society belonging to your, uh, your cult and dogma. Follow that. And then come back, and I will tell you. So I went back, and uh, obviously, once the person is dead in your home, so first thing that you remember, you may be loving your dad so much, but you cannot keep that dead body for a couple of days in your house. This is a fact in the naked truth of life. <laughs> You cannot say that, no, I love my, uh, I can, I could not say I love my dad so much. You know, I don't want to put him to the cremation ground. So your mind starts a new activity. Then the mind is engaged in performing all the rituals. I went back and I said, what do you want to say? He said, your level of sorrow and the grief decreased days after days. I said, yes, that is a fact. First day, it was a shock. Second day, crying. Third day, well, <laughs> it decreased. Be very clear. Don't get scared. And, when, and then he asked me that when I... Uh, asked you the question, were you in the same mode of crying? I said, no. What happened to you? Why don't you cry? Your dad is still dead. So he said, you have to ask your mind. First reason. Did you have any reason to cry? Then he asked. Yeah, my dad died. Did anybody who is born never die? If no one dies, then we have a reason to cry. 
So what is the message here is that we do not face the right notion, the right knowledge in times of the stress and suffering. The emotion takes over my mind. Emotion strips the knowledge. Emotion strips my self-awareness. Are you getting it? Emotions, that emotional freedom is not there. And emotion takes over the intellect, and then the emotions of grief dictates the intellect. It doesn't want to face the reality. Are you not secure physically where dad is gone? No, I'm OK. He has nothing to do. He made my life secure when I was born for a couple of months. But now I'm independent, OK? Then what made you grieve in the is it because the society grieves? Do you want to follow the same pattern? Don't you feel independent? How many times you remember your dad every day? I said, oh, just, you know, I feel the presence, that's all. I'm not criticizing anything. The Eastern wisdom says, go to the knowledge. Go to the, find out what is right and good. What is the nature of a particular event? Death is the event. Death is uncertain. It is unknown to me. I can die anytime. Maybe next week you will not be able to see this weird guy. Who knows? Can I live with that clarity? Can I be aware of that? You maintain that awareness, and you see the, where the insecurity lies in your mind. The insecurity goes away. Second challenge is the, is the dissatisfaction. Can you think how the dissatisfaction comes? The main reason of dissatisfaction, my desires are still unfulfilled. There is no other reason for dissatisfaction in my life. Do you like pasta? Yes. Did you eat pasta today? Yes. Are you satisfied? Yes. But I want to eat pasta tomorrow again, day after tomorrow again. What that means? I still am not satisfied. I have a sense of dissatisfaction. Clear? One example. Only one example. And third is unhappiness. Unhappiness. Ask yourself why I'm unhappy. So one element is desire. Second element is ego. My ego says, if this event, if this person, if the world behaves like this, if the world presents to me the way I want, I will be happy. Are you getting it? Not very deep, but simple. Now go to the next level. In insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness in life, all the three. I am searching security outside, which is not there. I am searching satisfaction outside in the world, not there. I am searching happiness outside, which is not there. Let the mind be clear. The, when the mind is clear about this, what happens? What happens? Think of it.
that sense of insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness, which is constantly living in my mind drops. No, 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 it is not happening with me. So give any, take any example in your life. I'm, I'm unhappy with a person, the way he behaved, he is my related, he is my close to, he is very close to me. So I have to ask, does happiness located in that person? If the happiness is outside, then I should be unhappy. <laughs> Are you seeing that? If the happiness lies in an event, outside and that event did not go through the way i want obviously then i should be unhappy so it means i believe the event in the happiness is located in the event in a person in a thing in an object outside the mind does not become clear it lives with the wrong notions it lives with the wrong notions you made me unhappy that event was very bad for me i'm dissatisfied i'm insecure i'm feeling a sense of insecurity because i married or i divorced or my near and the dear one left me mind has accumulated more than a trillion thoughts and impressions to believe that security, satisfaction, and happiness are located outside. Mind remains inside you. And if you change that mind, With that knowledge that security is within me, satisfaction is within me, and happiness is within me. And started some talk, so I will just continue with that reference. So once that happens, then the next question comes, am I the body? If I'm the body and body happen, if I'm the body, order the body, remain healthy, don't get sick. Am I the body? I am not the body. And brain is a part of the body. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I am not the body. The body changes on its own. We can have a little control over the aging process. I'm adding that part because of the science says that we can delay aging process. How old I am? If I say I'm only, oh, I'm only 15 year old. Come on, I see your gray beard. You know. Can I stop it? Can I arrest that? Can I remain young? Can I remain sweet 16? Answer is no. Do I have any control? No. What can I do to the body? I can repair and maintain this body. Ah, with the dietary control, with the regulation, you know, with the whatever the modern knowledge we have. That much we can do, but we cannot do anything. I remember my friend, we both were in the hospital whose mother was diagnosed with a cancer. Since she was almost 80 years old, she 
my friend told me that my friend you know there is a there is a one 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 group of people they follow jainism jainism is uh, you can say one religion where they do not eat any stuff whether it's a non vegetarian or milk or etc pure vegan and she lived her life with the pure vegan for more, almost for 80 years and you will be surprised she was diagnosed with colon cancer So what was the wrong logic? Wrong logic was that she did not take anything and still she is diagnosed with that cancer. First thing that I'm not the body and I do not have total control over the body, its growth, its decaying process. Once I know I can arrest, I can delay the process. Third thing is very important. Eastern wisdom is a self-awareness program and it is an emotional freedom program which helps us to live with that awareness that I am not the body, I am the pure consciousness. Anyhow, she died, but with another lady, she picked up this principle so deeply that the doctor said, now your life would be hardly three to six months, and she is still alive. She is almost 85, 86. She never leaves meditation, but with the knowledge, with an understanding that I am not the body. And we have many cases like there are many cases everywhere in the world. Last point is also, you know, I picked up all the principles. I'll take up <coughs> in detail in the following sessions. Our master says, you live, think, and act. with an understanding, with an awareness that you are not the body. Insecurity will disappear, dissatisfaction will disappear, unhappiness will disappear. Every moment of your life, you will find a secret. Why there is an insecurity? Because of the body. Not because of the consciousness. Why there is a dissatisfaction? It is because of the body. Why there is a sense of unhappiness? Because I was present in that event. So present in that event, the body was present in that event. Let me make it very simple. When I claim and declare that I am the body, then I'm a part of the event, then I'm related to someone, then sensual satisfaction in one or the other way gives me a short-term satisfaction, but the mind returns to dissatisfaction. I had a good sleep, Oh, you have a good sleep where your security goes away. Feeling of insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness in deep sleep. It is not there. Why it is not there? The mind is not there. The mind is unmanifest. Mind is not fully active. Do you see that? That we experience every day. In deep sleep, 
we have no insecurity, we have no dissatisfaction, we have no unhappiness. Why? The mind is not there in deep sleep. Are you clear? Or do are you still unhappy or dissatisfied or insecure in deep sleep? We don't know where we are sleeping. Whether we are sleeping on our bed or in US or in India or anywhere else. The mind is totally unmanifest in deep sleep. It means that sense of insecurity, dissatisfaction, and unhappiness are located in the mind. We have to change the mind. And then we have to follow the existence. Existence, if I have taken the birth, I have to die one day. This body has to leave one day. Finished. Now see, the partial mind is partially active in dream state. Totally unmanifest in deep sleep. Partially manifest or semi manifestation is then the dream state. So, in dream state, in one minute, we covered 15 years, 20 years, whether it's a pleasure or pain. That gives me some kind of a fear, but that fear does not remain for long because it's a semi active mental state. Only in the waking state, when the mind is fully active. So mind is active. If it is active in a right direction with the right knowledge, that is what the Eastern wisdom is. That is what the meditation is. Are you getting it? In a fully active state, this mind is living in ignorance with a wrong notion, with an error in perception that insecurity, the, my insecurity, my dissatisfaction, my unhappiness will go away from the world outside. That error in perception has to be removed from the mind. Why there is error? Because it is because of the ignorance. Why there is an ignorance? Because of the wrong notions that we have lived with. We have been living with that wrong notion. So if you have problem, definitely go to the doctor, but keep that knowledge clear in your head that I am not divine. I'm not. It's not a big deal, but I tell you a simple thing. I have four wisdom uh, teeth on each side. So Dr. Dentist told me, oh, we have to remove one every week. I said, no, you have to remove all the four on one day. <laughs> it happened almost a month ago. <laughs> and she looked at me. I said, you know, I'm, I'm OK. So they gave me, you know, some they put some anesthesia. So first tooth, I didn't feel it. In the second, I started feeling. I said, hold on, give me some more. <laughs> so she injected more, and then the second was drunk. Then the third, fourth took a long time. A lot of bleeding. Now it's a month, you know, that uh, that hole is being healed. You just keep that awareness that I'm not the body. Body may have many, many challenges, and you will see that I'm not the body, and still you are taking care of the body. You are not the car, you are taking care of the car. You are not the phone, you are taking care of the phone. You are not your house, you are taking care of the house. Do you see that point? I possess the body, I own the body, but I'm not the body. What I possess, I should take care of it. At the same time, I should live in the right knowledge, in the right perception. You will see the life changes. Life changes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes.
close your eyes so when we close our eyes you see that you are moving the mind inside away from the world so i said close eyes adopt the right position of the body what is the right position so that so that you do not feel you do not feel unease in deep sleep do you are you aware of are you aware of unease in deep sleep you know that you know the answer so translate that knowledge into your experience at this time okay i leave the body as it is in a right position at ease oh the mind jumps and mind says no i'm not at ease now make your body comfortable the way you want to sit and we make it comfortable we say settle in settle in a comfort settle in a comfort you you just see that what we are doing we are moving the mind consciously away from the world what what is that world world of people world of people of place of events of conditions everything so I have given you a very simple tip to follow every day. You look at the neck joint. The mind is looking at the neck joint. The mind is not looking at the neck joint with some precondition. Mind is looking at the neck joint without any precondition what is the precondition of insecurity of uh, of dissatisfaction and unhappiness so then what happens what happens you experience sensation comfort and steadiness Please pay attention to this. Be very clear. At this very moment, look at the shoulder joints without any precondition. Precondition of a blame, whether precondition that you start thinking my body is already suffering and you are guiding me to be comfortable that will destroy your mind will return you to ignorance will give you more suffering than comfort so don't allow your mind to go on thinking about any illness that you have shoulder joints be there feel feel obviously you are consciously moving the mind there so you feel so in that moment of precondition, you experience sensation, comfort, and steadiness. Now explore from where this, from where this sensation, comfort came to you as an experience. It comes from the higher consciousness what that higher consciousness says what that consciousness says that you are not the body you may not remember but what that consciousness says to the mind i am not the body and the moment you are not the body you have that knowledge and that awareness move the mind on the on the hip join be there feel objectively you are looking your body 
objectively as if it is looking at the body objectively means what that i am consciousness i am consciousness and here is the body lying or sitting in a comfortable position i believe you are getting the feel of it the entire body from the top to the toes and experience sensation comfort and steadiness so you experience the sensation comfort and steadiness because of the higher consciousness you can say or the mind or the mind has left its clinging to the world there is no other reason because we are not doing anything i'm not giving you any medication to feel the sensation comfort and steadiness i believe you are clear and now you get rid of the pain points caused by the thinking so thought what is the thought thought is equal to i am plus pay attention i am plus object or condition or a person outside there cannot be a thought without an object that object may be uh, a sickness in you so sickness causes a sense of fear a person dissatisfaction unhappiness may be an event you see no thought can exist without an object and that object that object is the world and the world is not me so what should i do so let the thought come let the thought go the thought come thought go any thought good bad high low good bad high low my eye check i check does not mean that you are controlling i check means you become aware that the thought without the word cannot exist so oh so thought conveys me my emotional dependence my emotional dependence on the world that is why let it come let it go so i gave a couple of metaphors one that you're standing across a road watching the traffic it's a physical take it to mental so mental traffic you have lot of thoughts but you are standing across you are watching all the thoughts good bad high low attached detached so all these thoughts come together in the mind causes the insecurity dissatisfaction and unhappiness we have done this so now self awareness program with the body what is that that i am aware but body cannot become aware of me uh, am i clear i have 
told you by an example that I'm aware of my right hand, but the right hand never says that I'm also aware of you. Come on. So means what? Where I am? I am consciousness. I am not the body. But that knowledge comes when the body is in a deeper state of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. So look at the head and the neck. Your mind is looking consciously. So when it is looking consciously, when it is looking consciously, you are aware consciously the head and the neck. Then feel without any precondition. So you will experience sensation, relaxation, and stillness. I think I'm becoming clear. Move the mind on the right arm. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. So you see, I am conscious means you are conscious, but the body is conscious because of you. I am not conscious because of the body. So body is a matter. With that understanding, look at the left arm, be there, feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Move the mind on the chest and the belly sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Move the mind on the right leg. Your mind envelops the right leg completely, in consciously, without any precondition, so you feel sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Mind looks at the left leg, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Mind, entire body, more and more you enter into a deeper experience of sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Not only to help you, I'm saying consciously, with a clear understanding, not only it will help you to minimize the impact of illness, of the body. But our goal is to have the emotional freedom, a separation in the knowledge that I am not the body. For that we need sensation, relaxation, and stillness. So now I'm giving you an idea. I have never, I, perhaps I have never talked. The breath awareness, you look at the breath, breath is going in and out. This going in and out is a message to the body. 
is also going in and out, is also growing, becoming old, subject to birth and the death. Simple way, subject to the birth and the death. Understanding with that knowledge, you are looking at the breath that is going in, coming out. You see, our master, what master says, going in of the breath, going in of the breath is the birth of the body. And coming out of the breath from the body is the death of the body. How many times? How many times we take birth? and how many times we die every minute, if I see, every minute. Why, why we, that knowledge should be there? To have a total emotional freedom. Freedom from the flinging of the body. and do nothing every day never forget to do the practice with the knowledge intellect understands that i am not the body but the mind returns to its attachment again and again that is why we need to practice daily, to reach to a point of self-awareness that this self is independent of the body. Not only will minimize the impact of illness, but will also help us to live in happiness, peace and calm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes. Open the eyes inside. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. We will share our experiences in today's session. How are you, and I feel I fine. Yeah. What do you feel? I feel quiet. Quiet and peaceful. You see that if the state of that calmness continues throughout the day, 24 by 7, our job is done. But why it is not happening? Insecurity, dissatisfaction, unhappiness. Where they are located in the mind, the mind, my mind, don't do that. So as you came not to do that, this is the journey. So how do you mean? I feel very quiet also. Very good. And is my mind quiet? Does it get quiet too? Yes. 
our mind gets totally quiet in deep sleep because we are not mm. aware of any thought. Yeah. Same also happens consciously in meditative state. Because in deep sleep, the mind seems to be disconnected with the world outside. That is one reason for the mind to be quiet. Yes. Can I make the mind quiet consciously in a waking state? That becomes meditation. Okay. Oh. Can I live into that state all the time? Yes. That is known as awakening. So in the end, is is my mind my friend? Or in that case, my mind is a friend. But as long as this mind lives with the insecurity, dissatisfaction, okay. unhappiness, mind is the greatest enemy. Yes. I see. No one is my enemy outside. No one is my friend. Everyone is my friend if the mind becomes my friend. And if the mind is the enemy, then the entire world is the enemy. Mm -hmm. That is what I did also talk about using a simple phrase. When the mind works on me, it is the greatest enemy. Mm -hmm. The mind has an emotional clinging, it has a blame and complaint, it has a reaction, it has a duality, it has a conflict. That mind works on me. And then the mind takes over my role. And then I say, I am angry. But mind is angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> so the mind is both, really. Huh? The mind can be your friend or your enemy. Yes, that is the entire journey of Eastern wisdom. Eastern wisdom teaches thousands of ways to make our mind friend. Whether you say make our mind friend or we start working on the mind, because mind is an instrument. Car is my instrument. So now think of another scenario, a car drives you or you drive the car. When the car drives you, the car brake, uh, brake of the car fails. Now the car is driving you. You can very well imagine what is going to happen. That is what happens every day with the mind. Because mind is driving. Mind says, I have a lot of problems in my life. The whole day passes with a sad, well, sad on the face. <laughs> See that? So mind is working on me. So that mind is the greatest enemy. And you, you, you wake up in the morning and your mind says, what a good morning. I welcome the sun, I welcome the day, and I welcome this existence. I'm grateful to that existence who allowed me to live today also. Now see, it is the mind who said this, but you are working on the mind, and the whole day passes peacefully. But I told you, because it contains trillions of impressions, that we have accumulated over the years through our behavior, attitude, reaction, that is causing the problem. Yes. That is all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Peace and happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.